So, welcome to another video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And you'll notice that I didn't say another war game review from theplayersaid.com. And that's because we're not playing a war game today. We are playing Stellar Horizons from Compass Games. But it does have combat in it. I, yeah, I suppose it does. I mean, huh? it does have combat. You can build ships with space missiles. and Yes. So, I, there, there is combat in it. And so, I wanted to call it a 4X game, but I... I don't think it technically is. Yeah. In the sense that when you say 4X, most people think of um, there's that heavy exploration aspect where you're flipping tiles and doing mm. things like that. Um, the exploration in this is different uh, yeah. in how it is. Because this is a sci-fi game, mm -hmm. but it's it's a good mix between hard science and like... Pretty, a little bit of fantasy. Pretty distant, like, like this, you end up with space pirates in like 150 yeah, years time and yeah. stuff like that. And and the rules call them pirates, but I like to say space pirates. I mean... It just makes it cooler. The the pirate yeah. counter literally has like crust yeah. cutlasses and, and yeah. like it's like... But they're space pirates. They're space pirates. They are space pirates. <laughs> so that was an interesting concept. The, 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 the exploration is very different because the map is set up based on whatever scenario you're playing. If you're... You're playing the full campaign game. How many planets? There's like nine planets laid out, and yeah, there's dozens of moons and different comets and asteroids, and you explore them by going there, making some rolls, and then you can find different types of resources. And if you deplete those resources by finding a good resource, you kind of get the ability to draw those world cards that they called them, yes, which kind of adds or changes what's there, which is. Kind of a very interesting... So that's similar to the tiles that you're flipping out like yeah. in a game like uh, Eclipse or yes. Twilight Imperium. But you have a fixed map regardless. Yes. Of, so that's not going to be in flux. But maybe the resources that are available in a given yeah. spot might change. And the conditions under which you might... Because some of these world... They'll be like, if you have a rover, plus three exploration. Or if you yeah. have a... What was the one technology... Sensor, chromatic sensor, or something. Uh, the spectrometer. Spectrometer. You get more. Yeah. Uh, so that changes in that respect, but the the map is fairly static. I mean it it's laid out. It's our it's our solar system. It's our planets and our solar system. Yeah, but I, it, and it's nice playing in in a in a board like that because that's my one typical complaint with four X games is mm -hmm. if you get a couple bad tiles. Especially early on, with one you, resource you can on be them or hosed nothing. in yep. a long game. You really can. The hosing in this one happens in a different way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it still happens, but it happens in a different yeah. way. Um, the, what I what I like about this, and the big draw for me, is that it has that good a level of of you know realistic science mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is um, you have at least some representation of time, distance, mm -hmm. and... Kind of in an abstracted in, way. An element yep. of orbital mechanics. Yes. Which you can bypass those by burning fuel. Mm -hmm. You don't track fuel, but it's it's considered burnt, and the penalty for doing that is you roll those engine failure dice, yeah. and it's terrifying every time. Well, and, and speaking of those engine failure dice, the percentage is very, 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 very low. Only 5% of the time yes. are those engines going to fail. But every time you roll those, every time we roll them tonight, it's like, uh, what's going to happen? And over the aggregate of a whole game, uh, you will roll that a lot. Probably and 50, so, 60, 70, 80 times. On Tehran, it's going to trigger. Yeah. Well, my first major roll of the game... <laughs> was launching from Earth into yeah. low Earth orbit, and I blew up my LV because yeah. it failed, <laughs> and I blew up my, I think I had like a rover on it or something, yeah. and it's like, oh, I just wasted $7 like, billion dollars okay. or $12 billion. Great. Yeah. But yeah, that, that tenseness is there, and there is a lot of randomness, but it, it is mitigated randomness. And I really like the tech trees because you can take these different routes. Tech tree is fantastic. That yeah. that was probably one of my favorite parts of the game. But you can minimize that engine failure 
Yes. Right? You can get you it can down. I think them. as low as you can get it is, was it 2%? It can get really, really, really low. low. 2%, that's not going to happen very often. You can also do your recovery rate lower for your man vehicles. Yep. Which is a 40%. Normally, it's, it's a 40 not starts at 50 50 we had the 45 percent tick because we started with that tech in the scenario we were doing tonight but you can also minimize that you can get that down lower so it it rewards yeah. you kind of doing some planning doing some investment and i like games like that if you're going to give me a random thing that could really destroy me help me to mitigate that and yeah. make it even less common to happen and what i do like about this one is it's not totally random no to me because the randomness comes from rolling dice. Yes. yes that's yep. your random generator. But you can lay off the gas and let your science do, do it for you mm -hmm. in certain things. Like if you send out a flyby satellite, you can just, you spend that one, uh, you, you know, you make the one roll to get it into Earth orbit. Mm -hmm. And you make that one roll to get it out of Earth orbit and send it on its way. And if you want to, you you don't have to push that engine button ever again on it. No. So you wouldn't roll those engine failure dice. You but, can just let it drift. And you just roll those. Right. Now, you might get electronic malfunctions, and it might just break. Yeah, yeah. But, but it only does that if you're using it. You can let it go, and so there, there's that level of... I'm not going to use these guys because I don't want to risk rolling them blowing up in some way yeah. unfortuitous. Yeah. You can do that. But, you know, we talked about this during the game. What are these called? Hal Halcyon orbits? Is that what they were called? Uh, it's the... Uh, what was that word? Sorry. Uh, no, it's helio... Helio... Right, right. So, so these orbits around the planets, yeah. it's like you get in position and then you can decide, oh, I want five or six opportunities to try to have that satellite discover something. But the chances of it blowing up are every time it's 25%. Every time it's 25%. So you you can push that luck or you can just wait until it gets down to the very bottom and it's really a guaranteed roll and you're going to get something really good, but you may still blow up. So it's, yeah, it's a you push your luck. Yeah, you just move on to the next planet. Yep. And it'll, but eventually you got to do something or you're not going to get anything. Yeah, but, it, so, but it's neat though. It's not just a total mess. You right. you can you can really like scale down on how many rolls you make, making one good roll, and then yeah. like you only have the one roll to try and like blow yourself mm -hmm. up, or if you just you will like go balls to the walls and roll five times and you'll die. Like, right. Odds on you will die. Yeah. You, the more you roll, the more you're gonna die. It's but that's something I like about a game that's you know in in at least grounded in some sort of science that it yeah. isn't a total trash luck fest. Right. I don't think it's that in any way. No. Even though you roll a lot of dice, uh, you you have the option of when you do or don't roll yeah. those. Very you, true. You can choose not to. Another thing we talked a lot about as we were playing was, you know, the cost of some of the vehicles versus the rewards that you can get. You kind of got to do a cost benefit analysis to decide what you're going to build. Yeah. You have to have certain type of uh, landing vehicles to launch. Certain of the bigger crude vehicles. <laughs> yeah. Those are more expensive. They're still going to blow up generally at the same rate. Almost. Not quite. Because the better the rocket gets, the, the lesser chance they do have to... Well, if you've, to, got, a, if you've got a better crude thing on top... Right. It's going it to help. It reduces that value. But then you've got to have a bigger, more expensive rocket. So if it blows up, it hurts more. It's, yeah. It's so cool. But you've got to figure out, you know, what is it you're trying to do? I'm going to try, I'm going to, try to get on the moon... I'm going to try to build a base. I'm going to try to build a base that does some mineral uh, mining and some fuel creation and tech. It's going to generate some technology. And you got to invest in that. But guess what? You're only going to collect that once every 10 turns. Yeah, in the economic once a decade. Phase. And, and that, so it's that slow burn. Mm -hmm. You really got to make your decisions about what you're going to buy, what you're trying to build. So there's a lot of planning in this game. Well, and then you ask yourself, why am I doing that there? You have to, you know, right. you've got to pick a good location that's maybe going to help you launch something in the future, right. or you know, secure some victory points by you know being in a good position. There, yeah. There's so much to consider. So doing that on the moon isn't necessarily the best thing to do, 
But if you could get that on Mars, where you're building, say you have a couple different types of, well, you can only have one one mining, right? You could have one mining, one tech. Yeah, you can have one of each type of, of the three type of bases. So it's like, you got to get out there and understand that, oh, I'm going to create this much of a resource, and I can use that resource to build settlements, or I can, which ultimately is the end goal of the game, trying to... In this scenario, for sure. Trying to build settlements that you're going to score victory points on, and then it's the first of 20, in that scenario. And, and that's something I also like, just the scenario variation. Oh, there's, there's this several... whole grand campaign where you play, yep. like, this massive game which takes forever. It would be a 10-hour game, I, I think. I mean, but... it's, yeah... <laughs> And I think it would be longer if you had more people. As I, well. I agree. But, uh, you know, there's some competitive scenarios. Mm -hmm. There are some co op scenarios. Yeah, I like that. Where it's like there's an invasion of Earth and you have to, like, defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you have to go out and you have to go and destroy this comet before it hits the Earth. Yeah. So you're against the clock, all trying to work together. Um, to get enough stuff over there and like literally shoot it to death. Yeah, take care like, of it. They, yeah. There's they and there's a, lot a of couple variety. of others. They they do a good job of providing a lot of different experiences for the same core game. Right. And some of it you're like, oh, this can be you know a really nice kind of sciencey game with a few space lasers. Mm -hmm. or, or some of it can be like it's Star Wars yeah. with some science. Like you you can there's some different bits and pieces that you can do with yeah. it. And I think that's a, a really neat too. Well, and, and I think frankly at the price point, yes. I think $140. 100, yeah, 130 140. You know, when you game. spend that much on a game, you got to have a lot of variety because you're yeah. you're putting a lot of eggs in one basket and you're hoping to get some return on that by you know trying it solo a couple of times and playing it a two player game and a three player game and a yeah. I'd love to get our group together Matt, Tim, Josh, you and me but it would be all day. I mean uh, yeah, I, I think uh, yeah. this game would go if all day. If you're playing a, a half decently sized campaign game yeah. this is an all day for sure. Well, which it's okay once we learned the rules it's really not that difficult. Yeah, it yeah. looks intimidating because the rule book's fairly thick. There's a lot of kind of exceptions in some ways. Some of the elements weren't as clear as I think we're used to sometimes in these big rule books. Well, the layout of the rule book was very interesting. Um, what it had was the first section explained all the different components of the game. Mm -hmm. And then it has this sequence of play where it tells you like, the order and the rules of the game, mm -hmm. referencing kind of back to, the com to like, the, the component pieces. It's really weird. I've never seen a rule book like that. Yeah. That's, that, that was, uh, you have to read this initial section, otherwise a sequence of play doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. It's just yeah. really odd how they've done it. It works great. <laughs> yeah. And as, so one person's going to explain to the other six players, because this can play up to seven, you're going to explain... This does this, this does this, this does this, this does this, this mm. does this. And then everyone gets these mini sequence of play rule like books. eight page. And, and it this, focuses just on the sequence of and play. And this is what you do in your turn. Yep. And it'll talk about different aspects. Mm -hmm. And you know that from like that in almost like an index kind of a, this yeah. is what all these things do. That someone yeah. explained to you. So it's, it's, it was interesting. So that way, I, w I wasn't used to that format, so... <laughs> It took a while of like flipping back and forth to be like, wait, where is this? In the yeah, book? but once we got it, it, it kind of clicked. And and the, once we knew the rules, the pace of the game is actually quite good. Yeah, especially at a low player count. I do a things, you do your things. Yeah, we're done. Move to the next turn. Yep. I do my things, you do your things, and this turn we're gonna do one extra thing. You're gonna build a base. Great. Yeah. Next turn, I do my move. Uh, yeah, I do my builds. You do your yeah. builds. I do my moves. You do your yeah. moves. Explore, explore, and then. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Next turn. It, so it was you slow it, to learn, but once you got but it. once you got it, the pace of the game was decent. Now I can't speak to if you've got six players. The downtime because we didn't play be, with six players. The downtime is going to be a bit more significant. Agreed. Um, well, another thing that we picked up along the way was you can roll the percentile dice dice along with the. Uh, the Explo side. exploration dice. And the rule books actually suggest to do that. Yeah. To help so you can do that and it's like, oh, I succeeded. I get a I get to draw one of these chits out. And oh look, I didn't blow up. And that saves so, you fifteen seconds when you roll instead of rolling two dice. Yeah. Right? But over, but over a game, it's gonna save you thirty to forty minutes. That, yeah. yeah. Makes it so that was something we picked up on. One of the other aspects I really liked, 
you know, we talked about the technology tree, yeah. this technology track where you're, every time you explore a comet, an asteroid, a moon, a planet, etc. and there's many ways you can do that, there's a type of resource. There is, it's ore, it's uh, there's, there's physics. All, so the technologies that you're exploring, it's physics, engineering, and biology. Yeah. I called it those because that's what the symbols look like. Well, but that's the resources. The resources are all fuel and supplies. There you go. So every time you explore one of those and you're successful, you're going to reach into a cup that has about 20 chits, right? 20, 25 oh, chits. More than that. Numbered yeah. one to five. And you're going to draw one out and you look at it and, you know, you may get a one, but you also may get a five. Yeah. And then you're going to kind of secrete those here on your player card so you'll know, oh, I've got 15 physics resources, whatever it's called, physics, right? Yeah. And you don't know how much I've got, so I'm kind of looking at that board going, oh, I need 30 to get this technology. And I liked that because, one, it was random. It added some a little more tension into it. But it also allowed me to kind of look at what I wanted and decide, oh, this round I'm going for biology and physics because I want these two, yeah. two tech and... I liked that. I thought that was also a very good way to do it. It made it fun and a little light and a little random, but also allowed you to, once again, plan. If you don't know me, I like to do a lot of planning well, in games. What's also good is it's not just a random number. Those numbers that you pull can have a direct effect on the board state. Yeah. Because if you roll, if, if you're like a, if you're a little rover or a satellite and you pull a three, that, you know... It depletes that yeah. planet. It goes down one step because you've extracted some, you know, mm. information and learning and knowledge from it. There's less to learn about this planet, now. right? So it's harder for everyone else to now make discoveries on yep. there, um, and it's harder for you. But it, yeah, it, it, you kind of reaped the benefit, and now everybody else is going to suffer because it's harder to 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 explore there. And it's and it's little bits and pieces like that that then. Then you think about the initiative. Mm -hmm. That becomes quite important if you're really trying to focus on something. Right. And there's only limited amount of resources because everyone's dogpiling them. You might be really into that. To go first. And, and so then you can you can bid. Yeah. Uh, you, you roll percentile dice. Yeah. D100 to, for your initiative roll. And it's high to low is the initiative order. But you can secretly before everyone, mm -hmm. you know, commits an amount, which... If for each, uh, I think it's I think it's money that you commit. I believe it might be politics, but each one that you commit, it adds ten percent to your die roll. Yeah. So you can commit a whole a bunch. I think it's that up to a limit of like three or four or something. Yeah. But you know because then you're like then I've got the more favorable exploration because I'm going to go first. I'm yeah. going to have the best rolls. Yeah. Because no one's depleting them. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Th there's a lot of neatness in how everything works together. Yeah. That. Very well put together. I, yeah. I think the game itself is very well engineered and designed. There's also a lot of asymmetry in the game. Yes. There are, is there six different factions? One, Seven. two, three. Seven different factions. Each one of them has a different special ability. Mm -hmm. Each one of them has a different set of counters for their vehicles. Which is really Which cool. is really interesting. Yeah. So I played North America. You played... Europe. Europe. How surprising. How surprising. <laughs> And and I noticed one of my vehicles, the man vehicle, got up to level two pretty e easily yeah. and allowed me to haul cargo. So one of my strategies was I was going to get a base on the map first because that was going to give me some extra resources. You didn't have that. No. So you had to develop those technologies to get that, and, and we weren't able to get that done. We we just didn't find enough resources that yeah. first couple of rounds. I'm working on doing, I have to like get up a tech level. But then that guy that I would have got, with the CV, who was a CV3, mm -hmm. would have been better than your CV3. So right. he had a lot of carrying more, capacity, yep. and, a, and a, he had a mobile lab on him. It, and it's it, the nuances in that stuff, that's what I love. Yeah. And I'll be honest, I know this is like a kind of a science game, mm -hmm. but I also, like at its core, this is basically a Civ Builder. Yes, I would like, I would agree with that. Everyone's got asymmetrical factions. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to go and get resources. You have an an economy kind of to worry about. Uh, you do have to manage your money very tightly. Yeah, money's uh, a problem in this. There's game. There's a whole tech tree. 
and it's moving out, exploring, and, and doing stuff. That's a, yep. And there's even conflict and, and, yeah. and combat. And yeah, I mean, there's this whole diplomacy thing. You can make yep. alliances. You can declare war on people if you are so inclined. Yeah. And you can literally, you, you know, some of these are warships, and you just yep. go around shooting each other. Yeah. Like it, this is more of a civ build than some of the civ builds. I would agree. Like, I would agree with that. So when you look at it that way, as opposed to something like High Frontier, which is very much a science and rocketeer game. Yeah. This is. Like, there's, it's so neat that there's so mm. much cool stuff in here. Yeah. And I, I don't know, I really like that. So that's one thing. And a lot of people have asked, or are curious, where does this fall on, like, the scale of kind of science games? Yeah. Now, I don't want to call it hard science, even though it kind of is, more than other games. Like, this is not Eclipse. Eclipse is just lasers and well, shit, right? I, I think that's a 4X game. But I think we've been asked but more... But there's no science in that, right? It's no, just, but, I mean, there's sci-fi. technology, but it's all fan- but it's lasers. It's fantastic. And this has it... Yeah. It tries to have its It's based in reality. In, in, you know, there's, like, all of this, like, time and orbital yeah. transfers and stuff. It tries to, like... Be realistic. Yeah, there's a little bit of sin. math here. You got to do some math to figure out, you, you know, how far things are. So yeah, like where does this fall with regards to things like High Frontier, yeah. and Space Corp? So, so so let's compare the those three games. What I would say, and this is my opinion, I think you feel very very differently about it. High Frontier, I think, is to the very far extreme of being a science simulation. Yeah. You're doing a lot of calculations. I mean, the the one time we played that game, we played for like eight hours, <laughs> yeah. and I got stuck on one of the moons of Mars for like ten turns, trying to figure out how to get off, and it was like just doing nothing. Doing nothing, and it was one of those things that in the rule book there was no explanation about what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, and how you should get there. Yeah. It, it, there was just nothing like that. So that game I think is based way more in science so that's on that end of the spectrum that's very much yeah no I so I agree with you mm-hmm. that is much more of a simulation and it's it was, a simulation it was a weird experience yep. uh, playing that and I desperately want to play it again see but, I don't see I, I don't and I absolutely understand that yeah I want to play that again because... you play that solo yeah or with Tim go find Tim and there's, you guys play there's it. a solo he sold it oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was devoted when he told me that because I want I want to play it again because yeah, yeah. since then <laughs> no, it's just, since then I have played an unconscionable amount of uh, Kerbal Space Program, which is <laughs> which is a physics simulator and it's all about like rocketeering and stuff like that. It's very very cool, and now I'm like I understand some of the things that mm. that High Frontier was trying to it do, t- yeah. and I'd like to to give it a go as a simulation, probably solo. Just to see, because I felt, mm-hmm. and the same way as you and everyone else on that table, what on earth were we yeah, doing? Right. I'm like, just moving stuff around, and I didn't understand why things were doing yeah. that way. Since then, I like <laughs> learned a bit more, and I'm like, yeah, I'd be interested just to just to see if I can actually kind of grok that a bit more. Yeah. So, so that one's on the far left spectrum. Yeah. On the other end of the spectrum is Space Corp. Yeah. You know, Space Corp, I think, is a lighter very playable yeah. game that's based in science. Meaning there's some science elements and some near science that yeah. is that is factored in. It has a very cool card system where you use different cards and you get different technologies and abilities. It is a very playable game. Yeah, it's also it's, very simple. And it's not particularly long either. No. A couple of hours and you're going to bang out. You may not get all three eras. And it might take you three hours or four hours for three eras. But to me, that's a very simple... I don't want to say simple. Simple is a bad word. Very playable game that I enjoyed. I enjoyed that but quite yeah, a bit. It's, it's not... No, it's... Simple is the right word in the sense that it is not nearly as complex as hard. No. The rules aren't anywhere near the no. same. And it's it's a really fun game. Yep. I enjoyed playing that a lot. We really liked it. And that game gives me uh, like a race feel. Yeah, because there are significant benefits to getting racing out. off that map first yeah. in in each of the eras. You yeah. get it's it's almost too much. Yeah, that, but so that one you I get a quite a space race feel. Yeah, out of that one, mm-hmm. and this one, I people were like, oh, hopefully it sits in the middle, and I would. I think I it does. Say, yeah, I think that's very what my, much does. My point is, Absolutely. I think this is right in between. Still got some of the hard science, but it's still very, very playable yeah. and very fun. I had a great time with this. But it's but it's rich. Uh, there's a lot to do in it. Yep. Um, it's big. 
if and it's long. Yeah. That would be... We the, played for like five and a half hours tonight. Yeah. And a lot of that was reading the rules, but I don't feel like we... We probably would have had another couple of hours. Yeah. Because we were getting near the end, but it... And we were starting to click. That was the other thing. Yeah. We were starting to click, and it was like, boom, 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 boom. We're going to do this. Let's go to the next year. But the scenarios where they're like, it's two hours. Yeah, I think that's that an understatement by about feel like two it, to four hours. Probably for like it for expert players. Yeah. Who you, have done it ten who times. Who have done it a lot. Yeah. And, and honestly, we're not we're not far away from that, really. No. Like from knowing the rules. Knowing what yeah. to do, different story. Yeah, how but to do it. Knowing the rules and being yeah. able to execute them rapidly enough. Yeah. You can get there. It's, it's actually not that bad. It's yeah. not that overwhelming. Uh, the other thing I will say is this, uh, you need a lot of space for this game. Yes, you do. It's a table hog. Uh, yeah. Like, and, and if you were playing one of the bigger, longer, deeper, I mean, you've got 12, 12 different tiles, maybe 15 different tiles, all and, the different and planets, all the, all the moons, all the moons con- stuff. I mean, it'd be 30, 20 to 30 tiles out there. You could squeeze it all on this table, but then the player, board, the player boards are going to be somewhere else. Yep. You're not going to be able to play everything right on the table. Which, so you need a big table. Yeah. that's So understand that. Now, yeah. the small scenarios, of which there's like four or five, yeah. uh, a number of those can just fit on any regular table. Yeah. This is a not, smaller not scenario that we've got before us. But just know that going into it. Yeah. Uh, I would be surprised if I didn't see people at conventions playing this. Where Great you get a nice big game. long table. Yep. Seven people sit down, yep. invest a whole day in it uh, for, for some of those really big ones. Yeah. I think that would be really neat to, to plan some of that stuff. Definitely one that I think we need to take to the next con we go, whenever that is. Oh, yeah. And the 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 other thing that I uh, was quite interested in was how does this game play as a solitaire game? Yeah. Because the rules and the scenarios were like, oh, it, this scenario can play one to seven players. But I couldn't find any solo rules. Got it. Uh, there's there's like mm-hmm. a little solo section for the campaign, mm-hmm. but that's more of to do with uh, how things carry on from each other. Uh, but so so I was a little bit like, okay, yeah. There's no rules for that. Having played this, um, I would I would sit I down right now game. and play it solo yeah. because the game isn't about gaminess in that way. Mm-hmm. It's about exploration. And so I like the act of building, launching, exploring, gaining technologies, and building. You're just building something and doing it. It, I, it, it that that's fulfilling enough. You'll be yeah. you'll be racing against the clock. Yep. But not having other opponents doesn't necessarily hinder you. You got a bit more freedom to do all the explorations you want. Yeah. But I think that would be a fairly rewarding solo game as well. So so one other thing. I, I know we're getting ready to kind of wrap it up, but. Production value is really, really nice. Yes. That this, uh, you know, everything's thick, thick counters, nice dice, beautiful tiles, great player aids, uh, really a fantastic production. The box is nice. It's got like a linen finish. Yeah, this it, it, it's the it reminds me of the Commands and Colors Tricorn. Yeah, that has that same finish, very yeah. thick cardboard as well. But th- this is a very well made game. Uh, I, I I think it's worth the price that you're probably going to end up paying for it. Yeah. Um, but I, there's a lot of game here, man. You could explore this. You could play all the different scenarios. You could play major campaigns, and you're gonna you're gonna take some time to have to learn it. I mean, it's not something you're gonna pick up immediately. No. Uh, at least, so rules not pick up well. So I think right, rules, rules wise, wise, you could pick it up, but figuring out how are you supposed to do what ha- you need to do and making that efficient. Yeah. It, it, this is going to reward that investment of putting that in yeah. and figuring that we out. We were getting there. I think near the end of the game, I was I was like, yeah, I got to do this and this and this, and I didn't mess around. I didn't build extra stuff that I didn't need to and waste yeah. my money. Because you you kind of play it for a bit, and you're like, oh, I'm just like I, I'm totally just like treading water. Yeah. How do I get ahead? You're like, okay, make a better plan. I I need to do this in order to get this done, and then do this. Yeah. Right. And so what I'll do is I'll show you the board. I'll do it at least. And then we'll go through a few of the mechanics and then we'll wrap up with some final thoughts. So here's a look at at least some of the board. (laughs) Um, There is a lot to this game and it's hard to show you everything, especially in one shot. Um, But we have here... Um, the the board is made up of these large hex tiles. So we've got Earth, 
and Venus and Mars in this one. And then kind of each one of these planets, you have a system. So here we have, it's the Earth and then there's the Moon and the near Earth asteroids. So the near Earth asteroids are its own little kind of satellite and you can kind of, there's little arrows connecting them so to speak. And then the Moon over here, which Grant's built a base on, uh, is connected through this little uh, junction here. So the, these are kind of linked together. And Mars has the comet and it has Phobos and Deimos over here as well. So those are linked. And you know, you get into Jupiter and Saturn and all their various moons. There's big asteroid belts and lots of different things in between. So you'll start on Earth, obviously, and then it's moving from planet to planet. Uh, trying to explore, trying to gain technological advances um, through scientific discoveries, and then you're using that technology to then build better spacecraft, build bases, use those bases to extract and exploit resources, which are then going to be used to build bigger ships, to explore further in the galaxy, to get more science. And depending on what the um, kind of scenario is, the end goal might be to build a number of bases out somewhere, you know, build a bunch of settlements on Mars, or it might be to go out and get a whole bunch of uh, resources and research, or it might be to go and destroy somewhere. Uh, there's one that's like destroying a comet. You go and destroy a big asteroid that's coming to hit the Earth. This, so you're against a clock, but you're all working together. Uh, a lot of them are competitive, some are cooperative, the scenarios. It's, pre it's pretty cool how much variety the game gives you. Um, but the game itself, you have your player board, and I'll we'll just clear off some of this stuff. Uh, this, this one was uh, Grant's one, this is North America. Uh, you have these holding boxes for the six spaces that you can build. Uh, you have a track up here that you're going to track your uh, diplomatic uh, status with different uh, various factions. And there's a bunch of uh, little markers for those, for each of the different factions. You have a bunch of these little markers that everyone's going to have. You might, you start off neutral, you might become allied, which gives you a lot of bonuses. You'll see there's bonuses to income and things like that, as well as resource trading. Uh, or you can go down to war if you're so inclined. And that enables you to go shoot pew pew lasers at each other, and it can be quite fun. Um... It also gives you your income and your um, technological uh, kind of uh, just general tech income. That This happens once every 10 years, uh, every decade. And you get a special ability. And then you also have this um, base population kind of size. Some of this is important, some of it's less important. Like the actual population size is totally game irrelevant. This tells you... Um, Tech bonuses, resource bonuses, all that kind of stuff. If you have a bunch of settlers like that you on Mars, then you're going to be able to mine resources more effectively. It's real simple. Now, uh, what you are looking for in this game for me is this stuff here. Because this is different for each of the factions. You get a different special ability, your income and your technological biases are different. And that's the stuff that you really get some fun flavor and asymmetry in this game. On top of that, your counter mix is different. So uh, the Europeans, to go along with their uh, ability, which is they get better tech, uh, they get better um, use of the telescopes. And so they have two different telescopes. Uh, they're both fairly cheap. Uh, one of them's get a, got a, a spectrometer on it. And one of them's just really good. Uh, so you can get those up cheaply and start exploiting that really early and farm those things. Just, you just get a bonus in this area. Uh, whereas the North Americans, they have, get, uh, it's cheaper for them to make innovations in technology. It's You subtract two from a cost of a technology if you are the first to develop it. So they get a bonus for developing technology and everyone gets a discount for researching technology that's already been researched, right? You kind of reverse engineering, all that kind of stuff. So they get it. It's technology is cheap if they're the first to do it and if they're not the first to do it. So that's the kind of their advantage. And, you know, there's a bunch of different factions. The Japanese uh, 
have better um i think their their uh failure rate what do they call it their robotic excellence their malfunction rate in robotics is minus two percent that's a big deal um china their their catch-up mechanic is cheaper um i think the russians um their recall rate is less because they uh their crews are a bit more hardy a bit more dedicated to the cause so their crewed ships don't bail as often things like that it's that kind of flavor in your different counter mix really does set you apart and then you've got this tech tree over here and you choose how you do that some things i feel like are a bit a couple like this is really good everyone's going to go for that but then things start to branch out as to what you want to do and which planets you want to explore and so the tech tree branches out and that shows you know you differentiate yourself even more and I love asymmetrical factions in games like that. It really, really makes a big difference to me. Um, it's just some core, but but really the core of the game is not that complicated. Uh, you spend resources to build things. So if you're on Earth, uh, resources are the same as cash, basically. So you need two fuel and one ore to build this, or three billion dollars. Uh, <laughs> so. $3 billion, you can build this. It's, it's a launch vehicle. And on top of your launch vehicle, let's say we're going to build a telescope. So the telescope costs two ore, or $2 billion. So we'll spend $5 billion, and this is what we're going to build in our build phase. And we need to do that because Earth has a thick atmosphere, so we need a launch craft. If you're launching from places like Mars, it's not a big thick atmosphere, so you don't need the rocket, the, the solid state rocket boosters. You just don't need that. So what you're going to do is when it's your turn to move, you're going to attempt to launch. You roll percentiles on a 5% or less, you blow up on the launch pad. So don't do that. And I rolled 55, so we're good. Now, in the early game, this uh, is blowed up. Boom. You're done with that. It's a single-use thing. You can buy it every time. That's really, really expensive. Or you can research the technology where you can reuse these. You're thinking SpaceX, Falcon 9, all that kind of stuff. So if you get that technology, which I would highly advise, you roll, it's a 75% chance you get to reuse this. And we rolled the 97, so that's good. 25, uh, less than 25, and this gets goes kaput. So you can reuse this now, so I don't have to rebuy that. So this guy is now in orbit. So what am I going to do with him now he's in orbit? He's a telescope, that's all he can do. Telescopes have a special rule, they just sit here in Earth orbit, that's all they do, they just look around the solar system doing explorations. But let's say I had sent out, uh, where's my CV, where's the Odyssey? So I've got this CV, crewed vehicle, and it has a 2 value. That's because it's quite big, it's 2. So I had to have a launch vehicle 2 to launch it, this is quite big. Uh, a launch vehicle 1 is too small to launch this. You just can't do it. So let's say I've got this crewed vehicle. Um, I'm going to leave my telescope in orbit because we like him. My crewed vehicle, let's say we're going to fly to the moon. So to fly to the moon, if I'm in orbit, I follow these little arrows, I can go to the moon. So let's try to go to the moon. Every time I burn my engines, I have to roll my engine failure dice. It's the same as the blow up on the launch pad dice. So I'm going to roll. Don't roll that 5%. And 5% doesn't sound like a lot, um, but the amount you roll it, if you are pedal to the metal, uh, it, it's going to come up. So uh, we go to the moon, and we're in orbit around the moon. We're going to stay in orbit around the moon, and that way we can explore the moon. So I've done all my moves, and let's see all the other players do their moves, more well, then we get to explore. So uh, we'll start with robotics. So my telescope, uh, I can explore around here, that's boring. The telescopes can explore anywhere in a solar system. That's their kind of special power. Uh, so let's say they're going to go, let's say they'll explore Venus. Or, yeah, why not? It's, it'll be fun. So because it's so far away, um, you take this explore value, which is a 6, and then you cut it in half, so it's a 3, and I add it to my 1. So I've got 3 plus 1 is 4. And on a d10, I need to roll a 4 or less. 
uh, but let's say I'm the I'm European, which I'm the European one. I get to roll two dice and keep the best one. That's their special power. They're really good with telescopes, the Europeans. So we roll two of these, and we're looking for one of them to be a four. They're both a fail, so that's sad. Nothing happens. Because I used my telescope, and you have to remember, each turn is a year, so it's, it's heavy usage. I have to roll percentiles, and uh, on a 30% or less, um, we basically have a malfunction, and we use it up, and it blows up. So I rolled a 22, so this is blowed up. That's no good. I now have to build another one and send it up to space. Luckily, I've got a reusable rocket, but uh, i got to spend another two resources and launch it again, do all that over again. If you pass that, nothing happens. He just sits there. You can do it again next turn. Then we look over at our CV2. He's looking around the moon. We're going to explore the moon. So I've got a five plus a four because I'm not halving because I don't have this big distance or anything. So five plus a four is a nine. I need a nine or less. And because I've got this mobile lab, it's the same thing. I can roll two dice and choose the best one. Doesn't matter, they were both a success, because I only needed a nine or less. So we rolled a seven, we explore successfully. This is an engineering symbol, so you're going to pull from this engineering pool, and you just pull a chip, and you keep it secret to yourself, but you pulled a two. Yay, two is pretty, uh, it's not great, honestly. So you get your two, you secretly hide it on your, uh, on your little playmat, and keep that to yourself, because you're going to spend that on a research track later. Now, we've used up all of our... We've kind of done our exploring. Let's see if our crew get petered out, because again, remember, they've been in space for a whole year. So we roll the percentiles. Now, the crew, these guys might get recalled on a 50% or less. And that's where that Russian minus 5%, so 45%, is pretty powerful. Uh, so 50%, so 50-50... We rolled a 42. So that's not great. Uh, they're going to flip over to their reserved side. What this means is they can still fly around. They can still move tr and transport like resources. But they can't do any more exploration. And if we had guns, we couldn't shoot them. So these guys are going to kind of limp back to Earth. We'll uh, refuel them and restock them and send them back out again. But again, if you had rolled over 50%, you stick on this side. And that's the things that you consider when you look at the tech tree. Because one of the first things in the tech tree is it reduces this 40, 50% down to 45%. That's a, that's a significant difference. Especially if you're Russian, because now you're down to 40%. And there's more and more and more. Uh, you can reduce that number down, I think, to, gosh, what is it? Down to like 20% or 15 for the Russians. So the more you invest in these technologies, the better you are, the more longevity you have. And uh, as the game expands and get, gets bigger, that's what stuff that really gets fun. Uh, some of these units, this is a weapons value, like seven attack value. Um, this guy has a five transport value. So you can stick a bunch of resources on him. You can stick him in orbit. He can build a space station or he could land on the moon. He can build a moon base. He can land on Mars, build a Mars base if he was so inclined. And then from there, you can mine resources, extract more technology, move on to the next world. That's the, that's the core of this game. Um, there is a lot more to it. There's a lot of stuff going on um, that you have to consider. But mechanics-wise, it's really not that complicated. Uh, now, it, now, employing the mechanics correctly and well... To make an efficient engine is almost like an engine builder, but it's this like Civ engine. To do that well, different story. Uh, I'm, I'm going to need a bit more time to like really make make you know let this game impose itself upon me. But uh, it, it's really really fun. One of the things I like about it is, um, let's say you have your uh, where's, it, where's my flybys? So you got a little flyby satellite. Instead of risking all of those dangerous engine failure rolls, because it sucks when you roll them, uh, you only, you, you know, if you're in Earth orbit, you just roll it the one time. You roll it the one time and you're going to launch yourself, and you might launch yourself all the way over to somewhere like Mars. And Mars is this plus one distance away from Earth's zero. So we're going to stick ourselves in the one shot. And that's it. I'm not going to worry about it. And then, 
that's all it does. From over here, I could roll um, to explore, but it would be minus one. Or it would be minus two if I was so inclined. Like you can do a really slow flyby, so you get lots of rolls, one each turn. So it's lots of turns staying around Mars, but they're at heavy negatives, and each time you do that, you have to roll to see if you blow up. So I wouldn't advise that. But you're forced to take time to get there, because it takes a long time to get to Mars. And then, on your next turn, you, you're not burning your engines, you just drift. Your momentum carries you into this near flyby orbit. And then from here, you get one shot to, to kind of take a snapshot, take some pictures, take some readings. Then you're going to fly from here, and you're going to fly to somewhere like Jupiter. And then you're going to you're going to fly around there, and all of the while you're not expending all this fuel burning engines it, it, and thrusters. It's you're using your momentum, and it's these little nuances of science that I that, that I like. It's the the flavor of this game is something that speaks to me in that way. I, I enjoy that. So again, this is a, some very basics of this game. What we'll do is we'll wrap up here with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map. Uh, like you said, components off the chart. Yeah. This is the most well-produced Compass Games game I have ever played. And, and we've played a couple of dozen. And, and they're all good games. A lot of them just have paper maps and yeah, very but, thin counters. But we're okay with white core thin counters. We most, don't mind them. Yeah, most of them are war games. And so yeah. that's the kind of thing that we would expect, I this suppose. This is a more Euro-style production. Yeah, it's very evident that this was designed for a much wider audience. Yeah. Um, and, frankly, more mainstream audiences expect yeah. better production. Well, and, this and, is. and one question. This was a Kickstarter. Yes. I'm not sure how well the Kickstarter did. How, uh, did it do extremely well? I don't. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I. I, I guess I, I should have looked that up because you know one of the comments I'm. I, I know I'm going to hear from people is, and we even talked about it. A normal Compass War game with two or three maps and four or five hundred counters is 120 bucks. Yep. This is 140, but the production is off the chart. So how do you explain just the 20 dollar difference? Yeah. So I have right here. This is Barlev. This is. Two twenty-two by thirty-four paper war. Huge games. maps, but they're paper. Yeah, but they're regular war game size. And four and or five hundred count, three four hundred counters. Two thousand counters. Okay, whatever. Sorry, was, we it, haven't played that one. It was, I haven't. It was eight counter sheets. Yeah, right. Uh, and then a bunch of play aids, which are like on card. This had twenty-six. I believe it was twenty-six um, punch boards. Yep. All of which are insanely thick. They're very thick. Like this is, this is like, flying pig games level production. Uh, uh, agreed. Uh, kind of matches that. If if you get that reference, which you should. Uh, <laughs> if you watch our stuff, you will. The counters are perfectly punched and rounded. Yep. No nibs on them. They're huge. There's an ungodly amount of them. Uh, you get so much stuff in here. These yeah. great boards and the tiles look decent. You get all that stuff. Same price as this. Yeah, right. ba basically. No, basically. no, no. Almost exactly. Yeah. So, so how do you justify that? So that's why I asked how well the Kickstarter did. Yeah, I don't know. Because if you did 30,000 units of this, that price point's going to be a little lower. So this might be more like a $170 game. Maybe. But because they printed, whatever, 25,000 copies, <laughs> you, you know, they got it down to 140 So yeah. I, I don't know that. The only complaint I had about the components, though... It's small. Like, yeah. the writing is small. This tech tree... The tech tree is the, the bigger It's beautiful, but you cannot see that from sitting... You read one of those. I dare you to read one of those. I mean, I'm, I'm blind, but yeah. even if I wasn't, I can't... You cannot, can't read it. No. So you got to get up on this. We had the same problem with the political track. The little policy. You, policy you tree. reference this a lot less, right. in fairness. But but even some it. of the spaces on the tiles, I'm like, man, maybe they should have organized those a little differently. Because we covered up so much stuff that we needed to see. Yeah, so, some some places get it crowded. This, this should have been put to the side so I could see, oh, I'm still going to get this plus this. That's a minor quibble. I think in the... In the grand scheme of all the components, fantastic. How many bags yeah. did they give you? 35? Uh, they gave me enough. Yeah. 
But I mean, tons <laughs> of thick rule book, great paper, great stock. This is you're going to play this thirty times, and it's never going to show its wear. And yeah, you know. So at, at the price that it is, you get a big game. Yes. Uh, I have whether this is good justification or not. I have paid this price for a number of games in well, my game collection. Rising Sun and. Giant Killer Robots. I mean, those fun big miniature games. You've paid two hundred bucks for some of those. Yeah, um, right. Yes, you're crazy. I know. You're crazy. Uh, but this is. I love the. It's got some good science in it. Yeah. And I really like that in a game. I appreciate that. It. Uh, I don't know. It's just interesting to me. It makes yep. p playing a game more than just moving from A to B, yeah. which every other game does. You know, you, you get you got to think about certain things, but it's abstracted in a nice, still playable way. Yeah. So I feel like I get some good meat out of it. It can play a lot of people, yep. uh, and those plays will be meaty, and they will be rich, and they will be long in the sense that Twilight Imperium is like six hours. Right? Yeah, and we like that game. You sit down, you get a really big game out of it. And this is that as yep, well. Yeah, agreed. And so. For me, I the price point doesn't bother me nearly as much as no. it would on something where it's a it's a lesser game. So yeah. this you yeah. you get a good amount in the box, and the game is great. And it, it, if this is the type of game that you like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is like you need to jump on this. Yeah, this might be the one that you keep. Yeah, really, very very good game. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Learned a lot, had a good time, enjoyed it, enjoyed the mechanics, and really want to play it again. And we always ask ourselves, well, "Would we play it again?" And this, this yeah, one, I'm going to leave it set up, and I'm going to play yeah. solo. I'm just yeah. going to just push counters around for the next week. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, but it's good game. Good I game. had a great time with it. So this is Stellar Horizons, and the designer it's Andrew Rader, uh, and it's from Compass Games. It is brand new. It is available. Check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, it. it it's it's a it's a hard science game, right? Yeah. So know your audience. But it's a playable hard science game. Yes. That's what I would say. But if you've got no interest in science, I don't know if this is for you. Uh, I don't know that I agree with that. Okay. I'm not sure it's that sciency. I could play this as a just a Euro style game and not really care about the science okay. and still get a good experience out of it. I will trust you on that. Yeah, that's what I think. But yeah, I love. I have great. This is like right up my alley. I love mm -hmm. this stuff. I'm a science major. So yeah. It's great for me. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.